And this idea that ain't nobody right, ain't nobody living right, is saying that God does not have the ability to save a person. That God cannot deliver a person from sin and from the practice of sin. God is more powerful than that. That's talking evil about God. Where either I have a choice either to be a sinner or be a hypocrite. You don't have to be a sinner or a hypocrite. You can be born again. You can be a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its stories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here, paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject, our good, the design, and the glory of God, its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, health to the soul, and a river of pleasure. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. Pray it in, read it through, live it out, and pass it on. Coming up right now on the Promise Place broadcast, learn how to keep God first in all areas of your life through the teachings of Apostle Tommy E. Quick. Let's join the service already in progress. I wonder who today is being dominated. Dominated. The Lord began to deal with me this this past week as I was praying and seeking God concerning next month being a powerful miracle experience. And the Lord began to talk to me about dominion. It's amazing what it did because it brought me back to this scripture. The battle here is for dominion. The word dominion comes or the word domination itself comes from the word dominion or to dominate. And what this beast sought, the beast doubt sought to be dominant. He sought to overthrow the Most High God. And in order to do that, he sought to destroy God's reputation, to, dis to destroy God's image in man, and to destroy God's credibility, to make God appear to be out of touch, uh, unnecessary, or to give the illusion that God's creation had so evolved until God himself had, been, had become irrelevant, that he had no control over his creation, that man had evolved so, and his ideas were so smart, and his intelligence and invention was so great, that God himself, amen, had lost uh, in, his, in his sense of importance, of significance now, because man had it in his own control. Amen. 
Last week we, we saw where the Bible said that they sought to throw off all control, all bands. Man did no longer want to be subject to God. And the kingdom, the kings of the world, the Bible said, why does the heathen rage? See, rage. Uh, and, and then it says, the kings of the earth gather together and seek to take counsel against the Lord, to break his bands. Is that right? To loose his bondage. They wanted to be free from God. Why do they want to be free? Because they want it to be dominant. To be dominant is to be at the top of the food chain. It is to be, praise God, to, uh, to be sovereign, to do what you want to do in, in the kingdom and nobody has any control or say. The kings of the earth did this. These kings were in alignment with this beast. The beast gave them power. But in order to do anything, they had to first misalign God. God had to be presented as either a God of confusion, a God who has many names, but is the same God. A God who has many ways to him, but he only says that there's only one way. He has to be a God that you can't rely on. So he's being projected as a God of the Muslims and the God of the Hindus and the God of the five percenters. And the philosophy today is that there's only one God with many ways with many names. Thank you, Lord. And of course, if any of us had many names, uh, then we know something would be wrong. We are hiding something. We're, we're trying to escape something, you know what I mean? Why did you change your name? The last time I saw you, praise God, you were Isaac. Now you say you are Jonah. Well, I'm Jonah when I'm in Nineveh. <laughs> but I'm Isaac when I'm in America. Why did you have to change your name? Because you were trying to disassociate yourself. God, God is not afraid. God, God is the master communicator. So his name is holy. And this idea of speaking against him is trying to destroy his identity and confuse people that would seek him to think that it doesn't matter what you call him and no matter how you serve him, you get the same benefit. That is the farthest thing from the truth. The young man that joined, in, uh, joined uh, Hillary, says that he's a Roman Catholic that believes in abortion. And if I were a Roman Catholic Pope, I would send him a letter and I would, I would withdraw his membership because the enemy is now letting anybody say that they anything. But it used to be a day that if you were something, that meant you adhered to what that meant. So that if you was a Christian, then people knew how you lived. Because being a Christian meant that you live a Christ-like life. Amen. Now you can say you're a Christian. And you can talk against God. Say you're a Christian and commit murder. Say you're a Christian and practice homosexuality. Y'all don't hear me. Men with men. And the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, it is an abomination. Uh -huh. The Bible says in the book of Romans that they do that which is unseemly and receive in themselves the just recompense of reward. Mm -hmm. See, how can you be a Christian and disagree with the Bible? Right. How can two walk together? except they agree. Amen. How can our politicians be Christians, want to come into our pulpits, speak to our parishioners, and then vote to murder our babies? The same Bible that I was in when they slew the children of Israel, amen, in Egypt, it, it angered God, and God raised up a deliverer. 
the same God of the Bible where I read where Herod ordered the death of the firstborn in an attempt, praise God, to destroy the Savior. It was an evil act. But today, people who say they're believers in the God of the Bible fight for the right to destroy the unborn and then say that they are Christians. No, no, you're speaking against the most high God because God said you don't do those things and say that I set you free to do them. I delivered you to do them. Holiness is still right. We're living in a day where Christians go to the clubs and strip their clothes off. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. We have torn down the old landmarks. But what's worse than that, the enemy has succeeded in getting the church to buy in and endorse his talk. And this idea that ain't nobody right, ain't nobody living right, is saying that God does not have the ability to save a person. That God cannot deliver a person from sin and from the practice of sin. God is more powerful than that. That's talking evil about God. Where either I have a choice either to be a sinner or be a hypocrite. You don't have to be a sinner or a hypocrite. You can be born again. You can be a new creature in Christ Jesus. But the devil is talking evil about the most high God. Is he able to do this? Yes, he's able. He's able to heal cancer. He's able to heal a man, any type of disease or illness. Oh, y'all don't hear me. He's a mountain mover. Oh, he's a way maker. He can restore your mind. Hallelujah. He can resolve your past. You don't have to be tormented by your past. God can resolve your past. But they tell us he can't do it. People don't want him because of weak churches and weak preachers that have been influenced by the beast who is talking and speaking against the most high God. Yes, you can get married and stay married for a lifetime, but you can't do it listening to the beast. Your marriage ain't good for two years if you listen to the beast. You'll hardly be down the aisle if you make it down the aisle before he tell you it ain't going to work. Because God is not able. But if you do it the way God tell you to do it, it'll be to death do you part. God will give you the maturity to ride the waves. It may be a Ferris wheel or it may, may be one of them, what, what do you call that thing? Roller coasters, but you won't get thrown out of the, of the bucket. When it's all over, you have your hands up with a hallelujah and how we made it and how we got over. Because God is able, but the devil tell you, you can't do it. Can't do it. You can't, you can't live without fornicating, committing adultery. God understands that we are people. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. He wouldn't leave it to you. He came and went to the cross and took your sins with him. And then the Bible says he gave us great and precious promises whereby we would become partakers of his divine nature. When you get Jesus nature in you, you are no longer the same. Old things have passed away and behold all things have become new and all things are of God. And that's why God Almighty, amen, we must resist. But watch this, watch this, the devil the devil, he knows who to get. The devil is not after the world. All the stuff that's happening in the world, it's not for the sinners. He's after the church. He shall wear out the saints. The devil, why does he, he got what he got. He had you and I until we got free. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm on, uh, come on, y'all. Until we surrendered and submitted and gave up our resistance to God and let God be true, the devil had us lock, stock, and bomb. 
So he ain't worried about the unbelievers. All the stuff that's going on in the world today is designed for those of you that were called before the foundation of the world that you should be holy and that you walk before him in love. Do you know that God chose you before you were born? Yes. Do you know that before God shaped this celestial ball that we call earth, that God already had made choice of those who would put their faith in Jesus Christ? You were called before you took your first breath. Hallelujah. God knew you in your mother's womb. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. And you might have been made in sin, but you were not sin. You don't hear what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Maybe you were born out of wedlock or born uh, as we call a bee or whatever. It doesn't matter. When God chose you. What I love about God is, as I said this morning, uh, those of you who know all about computers, they, everything they do in computers, they use, I believe, alts and ones, alts and ones, all code is alts and ones, alts and ones, and they write all the code that does all the things they do with alts and ones. But they further learn that all of the universe is mechanical. Yeah. That's why physics is a, a numerical science. Chemistry is a numerical science because God's creation is all numerical. It's all numerical. Uh huh. And so then, if God wants to perform a miracle, it's just a matter of Him changing some numbers around. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. See? All He needs to do is change some numbers or add a number, and then He's got an anomaly. An anomaly is something that happens that ain't normal. And we call it a miracle. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. So God creates anomalies and call miracles. See, you a miracle, young lady. And I, I, you a miracle because you were being dominated. See, the Bible says that, 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 listen to it. Oh, Jesus, Lord, don't let me. It says God took away his dominion. He took away his dominion. So what was he dominating? He was dominating uh, the people. It's the people that Satan wants to dominate. Do you understand that the office of president is a, is a dominant position? Do you understand that all of the positions that lead to that place themselves are little dominions where they make laws and change times that affect their constituency? The president is one of the highest dominant or dominions in America. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so people strive, kill, lie, and steal to get to that position of domination so they can change times and seasons and they can dominate the masses of people by telling them who to go to bathroom with. Who they can marry. They tell us they want to do it for our good. But when they get there, they forget their promises. They pretend to be Christians until they get there. So they can win the constituency of the Christians. But then when you watch what they do, you find out that they seem to serve the beast. Right. They speak against the Most High God. And they try to wear out the saints. They tell us what we got to do. We got to violate our conscience for a small minority of people who are not a minority. Who want to practice divination and evil lifestyles. So there are many dominions. How does Satan dominate? Now we understand that Jesus said, he said, Satan cometh but to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I came that you might have life. Is that right? 
and that you might have it more, what? Abundantly. Abundantly. All right? So now, if Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy, and we learned not long ago that Satan's method of ruling is through what? Evil. Is that right? He rules through evil. Evil is the opposite of righteousness. Evil is not sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Evil is the creation of the heart that is in rebellion against God. And if I would go further, God's establishment principles. Evil is a means of trying to establish oneself. Evil always tries to be happy at someone else's expense. Evil lays snares, pitfalls, and traps. Are y'all with me here? Evil is wicked wisdom, earthly wisdom. It is Satan's way. Now watch Satan when it comes to Eve. Hath not God said, and slip one word in. And then he said, thou, God said, thou shalt surely die. Evil said, thou shalt not surely. See, just takes and just, he changes, he puts another alt in there. <laughs> Another one. He makes them, he takes God's truth and puts something in there. His goal, though, Jesus made very plain. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. What does he want to destroy? Well, you know that there's nothing that Satan finds worth throwing up, worth killing, but humans. He don't care about blowing up buildings if ain't no humans in it. Yes, amen. He doesn't care about a man shooting rounds out of gun unless it hits somebody. <laughs> Satan is after us because we bear the image of the most high God. Yes, so the saints are the target. Yes, now I want you to hear that. Everything that the, that the L, LBGTQ uh, agenda is doing is against the church. Because they say the church are full of bigots and homophobics and we, if it wasn't for us, they could do anything they want to do because we believe the Bible. Right. So all their marches, they are belittling our God. They are belittling our Bible. Right. It's amazing they don't mess with the Muslims. But they give us a fit. All this stuff is designed to wear us out. Now, there's some so-called Christians who don't feel that they're in a war. The reason they don't feel like they're in a war, when they saw the imminent enemy army marching down the street, they slipped in and got in step with them, and they marching right against them, right with them, see? And they don't feel they're in the war because they have embraced all that they do. Liquor-drinking Christians. Now, you know, as people of color, the first sin we learned about when we got saved 40 years ago was drinking. You know why? Our uncle was an alcoholic. Our daddy was, they, they needed some kind of anesthesia. <laughs> yeah. And they were using alcohol. Amen. Some of them were using Clorox when they couldn't get alcohol. Am I right, mother? They drink Clorox to get their high. And the first thing that they told us when we got saved is that, that we had to sanctify ourselves. And if any man uh, uh, destroy his body, him will God destroy. And one of the first things that we got delivered from was drinking. And immediately our family started going up. Now, 50 years later, we done got so blessed until we've gone back. Come on, y'all. And slipping and dipping. Huh? And taking our little what we call evening cap. I'm here to tell you if you build again the thing that you once destroyed, you make yourself a transgressor. And 
hear me, I'm not trying to be difficult, but the Bible said God will visit the iniquity of the fathers on the second and third generation. So when you go back with your little nip, you got to be careful your son or daughter don't become a full-fledged alcoholic. That was a dominion. The, that drinking and alcohol was something that Satan used to dominate whole generations. And some, some races were more susceptible to it than others. Sometimes because it's cheaper, sometimes it can, because it can be made in a steel. And we were dominated and we were destroyed by it. We were controlled by it. Our families were vexed. Our lives were vexed. We were limited by it. We couldn't even uh, get beyond uh, a minimum wage if we could get a job because of our alcohol. Sometimes couldn't hold a job but a month or two because of our alcohol. Couldn't keep our feet on the ground sometimes for but, but a few weeks before we were back in jail for public drunk because of alcohol. And it destroyed our families. It was a means of dominion. And saints, I'm here to tell you, you got to get ready because the devil has got some means of dominion dominating us, dominating and beating us down as a people and you got to be ready for the devil when he comes after you Lord have mercy Jesus how many folk were destroyed how many folk closed their eyes in death and never got an inkling of life never knew what life could be with God never knew never knew what they could have done the joy they could have had because they came under the dominion of one of the powers of Satan if you enjoyed this message preached by Apostle Tommy E. Quick we encourage you to purchase this message, which will be made available in CD, MP3, and DVD formats. If you would like more information about our ministry, please visit our website at plcdc.org. If you would like to join us for our services, please come visit us during our morning and evening services. Thank you for joining us for the Promised Place broadcast, and remember to have a God first day. That when I got saved, the Lord proved his ability, amen, to take the dominion from the beast. Because right. in my yes, case, yes. when I lifted my hands and said yes, yes Lord. the Lord looked down from heaven yes, and told the devil to open the gate and let him out. And where I had that been dominated by that addiction and all my money was going to it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? And all of my personhood had been lost. God restored it all. And in one prayer, one prayer, God told the devil that he's still on the throne. This is my child. And God destroyed my addiction. But you know what the devil has done? He's attacked the most high God so that people won't come to him so they can be delivered. He has repainted him. He has colored him. He's tried to destroy his image so that people won't realize that their help is in the Lord.